Hello everyone, welcome to e-classes by Dr. Adira. This video is on Jogren syndrome. Jogren syndrome is a chronic systemic autoimmune disorder that principally affects salivary glands and lacrimal glands. And it results in serostomia or dry mouth and serophthalmia or dry eyes. The effects on eyes can also be termed as keratoconjunctivitis sicca where the word sicca means dryness. Moving on to the types of Jogren syndrome, there are two types as primary and secondary Jogren syndrome. The primary Jogren syndrome affects salivary and lacrimal glands and causes serostomia and serophthalmia and there is no other associated autoimmune disease whereas in secondary Jogren syndrome in addition to involvement of lacrimal and salivary glands there is also another associated autoimmune disease which might be either rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus erythematosus or scleroderma. Since primary Jogren syndrome involves only salivary and lacrimal glands, this is also known as Sicca syndrome, where the word Sicca means dryness. So, it, since it causes serophthalmia and serostomia only, the disease primary Jogren syndrome is also known as Sicca syndrome. Etiology of Jogren syndrome is not very clear, but it suggested that viruses like Epstein Barr virus. Human T cell lymphotropic virus, etc., might cause this Jogren syndrome. And also, it is found to have some genetic influences because relatives affected of affected patients have an increased frequency of other autoimmune diseases. That's why, since because, uh, this familial tendency is present, genetic influence is also proposed as an etiological factor. Moving on to the clinical features of Jogren syndrome, it commonly affects middle aged mm -hmm. adults with a very high female predilection. It is found to be 9 times more common in females than males. So it's similar to any other autoimmune disease in this regard. And I said it principally affects the major salivary glands and lacrimal glands. As it affects salivary glands, uh, it might cause enlargement of salivary gland that will usually bilaterally as you can appreciate in this image. The enlargement may be appreciated in one third to one half of the patients affected with Jogren syndrome. And the swelling or enlargement may be slightly tender or even painful. And pain if present may be intermittent or even persistent. As I mentioned already, the primary Jogren syndrome is not associated with any other autoimmune disorder and it affects the salivary and lacrimal glands only. As it affects the salivary glands, there is reduced uh, production of saliva causing serostomia. As you can see in this image, the oral cavity, the saliva is, salivary secretion is less and the residual saliva appears frothy and reduced lacrimal secretion or tear production causing serophthalmia or dry eyes and the secondary Jogren syndrome is associated with other autoimmune conditions as well that means there is Sicca syndrome that is uh, serophthalmia and serostomia along with that there is presence of other autoimmune conditions as well and it is found to be present that is Jogren syndrome is found to be present in 15 percentage of patients affected with rheumatoid arthritis and 30% of patients affected with systemic lupus erythematosus. So, these are the common autoimmune conditions seen associated with Jogren syndrome. The principal oral symptom of Jogren syndrome is serostomia or dry mouth as a result of reduced salivary secretion. And the saliva, residual saliva appears frothy as you can appreciate in this image and there is lack of its usual pooling in the flow of the mouth. As a result of serostomia, there are various secondary manifestations of secondary complications like difficulty in swallowing, altered taste sensation, difficulty in wearing dentures, fissuring of the tongue with atrophy of papillae as you can appreciate in this image. And there is erythema and tenderness of oral mucosa due to development of secondary candidiasis as you can see here. 
uh, there is white patches in the oral mucosa which is secondary candidiasis which develops as a result of serostomia or dry mouth and there is lack of cleansing action of saliva which causes the very important very characteristic complication of serostomia that is dental caries and the dental caries that develops due to serostomia typically affects the cervical third of the crown that to all the surfaces all the four surfaces in the cervical third of the crown so in this fashion the dental caries might result that is cervical caries might result in the amputation or loss of the uh, rest of the crown portion and another uh, feature another complication of serostomia is uh, that is re reduced salivary flow rate might cause retrograde bacterial sialitis that is inflammation of salivary gland due to retrograde spread of bacteria now let's see what are the ocular manifestations reduced tear secretion or lacrimal secretion causes scratchy or gritty sensation or feeling of perceived presence of foreign body in the eyes along with this there will be also defects in the ocular surface epithelium because of lacrimal because of inflammation of the ocular mucosa these defects together are termed as corrective conjunctivitis sicca that is ocular manifestations of dry eyes that is of thalmia and defects in the ocular surface epithelium together are actually termed as corrective conjunctivitis sicca and because of the persistent inflammation there will be blurred vision and aching pain these symptoms are usually least severe in the morning and increases as they as the day progresses the inflammatory process in jogren syndrome also affects other tissues of the body so there is presence of dry skin usually dryness of nasal mucosa along with it fatigue and occasional depression is also manifested now let's see what are the investigations or more methods to identify jogren syndrome various investigations include sialography and there are various tests to assess serophthalmia or dry eyes then there are blood and serological examinations and biopsy so if you see a sialographic image of major salivary gland affected with jogren syndrome uh, it, you don't find the normal branching or normal arborization of tactile system you don't find it here and there are areas of punctate sialectasia these are the areas of sialectasia or ductal dilatation which appears as this punctate areas and this overall appearance thus gives a pattern or produces a pattern termed as fruit laden branchless tree appearance or fruit laden branchless tree pattern there are two tests to assess keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis sicca or ocular symptoms the first two test is known as shimmer test which is done to assess serophthalmia in shimmer test a filter paper as you can see in this image a filter paper is placed in the margin of lower eyelid between the medial and lateral thirds of the lower eyelid and the wetting is assessed after 5 minutes this is placed in a uh, unanesthetized eye that is without giving any local anesthesia and after after 5 minutes when you check the wetting if it is less than 5 mm that is indicative of serophthalmia similarly i also told you there are manifestations or there are defects in the ocular epithelium as a result of persistent inflammation that defects defects in the ocular epithelium or defective ocular epithelium can be visualized using this dye known as rose bengal dye so rose bengal dye test if done will show if the ocular epithelium is defective as you can appreciate in this image so these two tests are done to assess the ocular symptoms moving on to blood and serological investigations as in any other autoimmune disorder the erythrocyte sedimentation rate is usually high in patients with jogren syndrome and there is elevated serum immunoglobulins especially immunoglobulin g or igg levels 
and there are specific auto antibodies like anti ssa antibody and anti ssb antibody that is anti jogren syndrome a and anti jogren syndrome b antibodies especially in primary jogren syndrome and usually they are seen in 40% of cases and the ssa is seen in 40% of cases of primary jogren syndrome and anti ssb is seen in 25% of primary jogren syndrome cases and there is presence of another factor known as rheumatoid factor in about 60% of patients affected with jogren syndrome the presence of rheumatoid factor is irrespective of patient whether the patient has uh, rheumatoid arthritis or not even if the patient doesn't have rheumatoid arthritis in jogren syndrome there may be presence of rheumatoid factor similarly anti nuclear antibodies are also present in 75 to 85 percentage of cases coming to histopathological examination if you do a biopsy of salivary gland affected with major salivary gland affected with jogren syndrome will find acinar destruction that is destruction of salivary gland acinai with intense lymphocytic infiltration but for diagnostic purpose usually biopsy is taken from normal tissues of lower lip to examine minor salivary glands so for this purpose 1.5 to 2 cm in Uh, incision is made in the lower labial mucosa parallel to the vermilion border and lateral to the midline to get five or more ma- minor salivary glands so after obtaining the specimen it is stained and se- examined under microscope for the presence of lymphocytic foci when we say a uh, lymphocytic foci it should be collection of more than 50 lymphocytes adjacent to normal appearing minor salivary gland acinae so you if you find more than one such foci in 4 mm square of glandular area that confirms the diagnosis of jogren syndrome so this is the minor salivary gland biopsy test done for the diagnosis of jogren syndrome so that's all about the investigations of jogren syndrome now let's move on to the treatment so treatment of jogren syndrome is usually symptomatic for serophthalmia to relieve this the symptoms or difficulties produced by serophthalmia we will have to provide artificial tear secretion and to relieve the symptoms of uh, serostomia artificial saliva that is salivary substitutes and sugarless candy can be given to uh, stimulate the salivary flow and oral hygiene maintenance of oral hygiene is very important so use of oral hygiene products containing antimicrobial substance like lactoperoxidase lactoferrin etc can be given then xylocoque medication or cholinergic drugs like pilocarpine can be provided to increase the salivary flow to prevent dental caries because of serostomia as a result of serostomia it is advised to give fluoride application to the teeth and to if there is presence of secondary candidiasis anti fungal therapy can be initiated Another interesting fact about Jogren syndrome is its risk of development of lymphoma. It is found that patients with Jogren syndrome has 40 times higher risk of development of lymphoma than normal population. This lymphoma here is usually a type of low grade lymphoma that is low grade non Hodgkin B cell lymphoma or mucosal associated lymphoid tissue lymphomas. The risk of development of lymphoma in patients with Jogren syndrome can be assessed using immunoglobulin re- gene rearrangements in labial minor salivary gland biopsy. This can be thus used as a important marker to know the risk of development of lymphoma in Jogren syndrome patients. So that's all about Jogren syndrome. Thank you for listening.